you know, I'm going to start with what an amazing league we, we are in this year. It's just incredible. Um, every night is an absolute dogfight, no matter who you're playing. You look at Indiana Northwestern, you look at us, Rutgers. I mean, Rutgers is very good. Uh, I hope everybody understands that. There were, I think the net, there were 29 or 30. There's 18 in the top 30. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a really good basketball team. Uh, so a lot, lots to learn from that game. Lots to learn from, from Iowa, and I thank all the Penn Staters that came out in Philly and the Palestra. That was an amazing, an amazing day. And it's a great lesson for us on the emotional and physical toll that it took on us. Now, you need to be able to bottle that up and put that behind you and be able to compete the next night. thought we did it for about 20, 25 minutes, but give Rutgers credit. They did a great job in the second half of making all the winning plays. Um, a couple offensive rebounds. Um, and we missed, some, we missed some good shots. Uh, we didn't shoot the ball particularly well, and I think that affected us a little bit as far as rebounding and fouling. You know, we fouled a little bit. So we'll learn from that. We watched film. Uh, yesterday, I thought we had a great film session, and I thought we had a great practice today. Really competed and got after one another, uh, and I think we needed that. Get a, get that edge back, get that chip back. Understanding the things that Rutgers did to us to win the game, we need to be able to do that as well. Heading into uh, heading into Saturday, which is the CVC game and, and a great Wisconsin team. When you look earlier in Lamar's career, he was not as good of a defender as he is today. He also didn't foul nearly as much his first really two and a half, three seasons that he's played. Is there something outside of any given call about how he's playing the game defensively that's leading to more fouls that you see when you watch him on film that you want him to change? Yeah, you know what he needs to change, Ben? It's, it's the um, offensive fouls. It's not so much the defensive fouls, it's more the offensive fouls. Miss shot, following up your own miss and fouling. That 94 feet foul, we don't need that one. And then he does a little bit, when he goes left, he has a little bit of a chicken wing. He's, he's got to tighten that, keep that thing tucked in because he's getting more offensive fouls. He had a charge against Iowa. Right, he left his feet. So there's little things that he needs to tighten up as far as his habits are concerned to be able to prevent those two offensive fouls that he's getting. Second half Iowa, he reaches in. We don't need that. We don't need to reach in. He's got to be smarter than that. He's trying to make a play. He wants it so bad. He wants to win so bad. I mean, in the Big Ten right now, he's not even our leading scorer. I mean, that, that should tell you he wants to win so bad. But we need to channel that a little more. Don't worry about the refs. You know, do the best you can with habits. I mean, I think we worked on that in practice. We showed that in film last night and today. Of you know, just being in stances, doing the little things. This piggybacks on that, but does that extend to to everybody else? I mean, Mike got tagged with a couple, um, you know, twenty five feet from the basket. Um, the the Brockington uh, pick uh, in the in the final couple of minutes. Um, you know, is there is there something about the way that you guys play um, in terms of you know, not necessarily in the paint, but uh, extended in the court that um, is, is kind You're of strong. On the perimeter. Yeah. So our guys need to do a better job on the perimeter defending the ball one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it's really that simple. Because Mike's picking up a foul because he's coming over to help, and, he, and he's picking up some cheap ones. So we, we just got to do a better job of guarding the basketball. And if we do that and everybody does their job, I think you prevent that paint touch and that lessens the load of fouls. Because I looked at Ken Palm, we're over 200 in fouling. Somehow we have to play hard without fouling. And it and can be done, we've done it. We, we dropped under 200 for almost two weeks there and now we're back up. Uh, and, and again, Big Ten play, playing on the road, I'm not using that as an excuse, it is what it is, but we have to do a better job and we have to adjust to the officials. If the officials are calling ticky tacks, we gotta know that. And then what's, what's the balance for you um, between trying to maintain uh, the same mentality, you know, when you get hit early in a game with, I mean, I think you had five in the first four minutes, <laughs> team fouls, right? Like, how does that, how does that impact um, their, you know, the player's mentality and how you coach? Yeah, I mean, we gave up some major, major drives in that game. They had, a, they had a few drivers out there, right? 22 wasn't making threes, 24 wasn't making threes. Their, their drivers, 4 four and 42, were getting in the paint. Now we're, we're afraid to foul, you know? So now our hands are back and we're just letting guys go right by us. So it does really affect the mindset of how you want to compete, how you want to play. But if everybody does their job on the court, you should be able to prevent those, 
those uh, those blow buys. How would you assess Miles' play as of late? Needs to shoot the ball better. We all know that. But I think, you know, Iowa, he did a great job. He had four assists in the last four minutes, made great plays, went six for six from the free throw line, hit two critical threes, uh, one, one early, one late. Uh, not real late, but in the second half. Um, he's got to keep rebounding. He had seven rebounds in that game. You know, he's going to have to do those things to stay on the floor for us. Um, you know, the good decision-making and playing great defense and rebounding. Uh, but I, I think it's only a matter of time before he gets his legs underneath him and he starts to make some threes. And um, with Jamari, the, the inability to score, how much is that hurting you or is it not hurting you? Is, are you okay if he doesn't score? Yeah, I, I think what hurt us against Rutgers with Jamari, um, him picking up three fouls, he hasn't done that all year long. So we lost our pace and tempo on offense. And we kind of lost our, our toughness on defense because he's the, he's the guy that they're all going to follow on the defensive end. That really hurt us because it became a half-court game. And we want to get up and down. We want a high-possession game. And unfortunately, with him on the bench, you can't do that. And one last thing. Uh, you touched on this a little bit, but when you're ranked, you're taking everybody's best shot. How much of an adjustment is that or is it not an adjustment in terms of, you know, you, you're, everybody has is kind of pinpointing, yeah. you know, we got to get these guys. Yeah, R Rutgers was, the, look, that place was insane. And they were they were jacked up to play against us. I thought we did a good job in the first half. We're up 10. It could have been 13. It could have been 15. We missed open shots. We turned the ball over at times where we really could have done a great job. But the mindset, I, I've been saying mental fitness, mental conditioning, it's really important that we put our walls up, limit our noise and distractions on the outside, and understand this is the standard of Penn State basketball right now. It's not about the ranking anymore. That That's nice. It was there. We've been there, done that. Now, now it's about the standard that we set every single night. We come out and we compete. And that, that's what we have to do. You want to play a high possession basketball. Wisconsin wants to play low possession basketball. How does that? Yeah, contrast. Same with Rutgers. Big, big contrast. We got to get stops. You get stops, you get, you get to run out. So we have to do, our defense had to tighten up, and we worked on our defense for quite a bit today in, in practice. So we got to shore some things up, tighten some things up, get some stops. We get stops, we can go. Got to rebound. And that's a little bit of a problem right now. Got to rebound the ball. They had eight offensive rebounds in the second half. Rebounding hurt us in the second half, and free throws. We're making the free throws against Rutgers. What do you attribute that to? You know, diff foul trouble. <laughs> Different guys out there. You know, maybe a younger team out there playing smaller. Um, we played some different lineups today in hopes to, to kind of cure that and see what we can do. But, you know, when you're missing shots, sometimes that affects you down here communication-wise, listening-wise, and then finding bodies when the shot goes up. You've had a lot of guys play a lot of basketball for you this year that, that played last year as freshmen. How old do you, in your head, think this team is? We're not as old as people think we are. Um, our front court is, real, is old with Mike and Lamar, but then we're, our sophomores are playing critical, critical minutes, and they're vital to everything we do. So we really need some, somewhat, you asked about Miles. We, we need consistency, MJ, Miles. I mean, MJ put on a show there for about five possessions. But, you know, we need that for 40 minutes. Brockington, great against Iowa. You know, got to be great against Rutgers on both ends of the floor. So our sophomore guards, we're asking them to do a heck of a lot, especially when Lamar and, and, and Mike are in foul trouble. These guys obviously absorb a lot of information over the course of a, a day or a week. How do you get the feedback that they have absorbed it in a way that's going to reflect itself by the time you play? You know, I, I think it's their approach, Ben. I, I think I see it. And if they bring in the right approach in film and they bring in the right approach to practice, practice was, you know, highly competitive today, a lot of energy, and, you know, they, they went after each other. Um, so that tells me we're dialed back in. Not that we weren't against Rutgers. I want to give Rutgers credit. They played a great, a great game. But I, I feel like we're, we're back to building that foundation. This is one of those deals, if you don't want to answer it, don't, don't. But what prompted you to get contacts in the middle of a season? It just seems kind of interesting timing. Again, if it's too personal. It's not personal. Okay. I, I, sometimes I struggle really seeing in games. Not seeing, not the game itself, but the box score or my sheet. And 
sometimes I forget my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, they're not the top uh, on the list of priorities. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to grow up a little bit. I'm going to try contacts. And, you know, let's see, let's see if this works. Even though you still look blurry, Nate. Um, yeah, it's okay. Which is not a bad thing, I guess. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Wait, Peter, oh, you got one. Hey, Coach, you've done a good job of bouncing back from losses this season. Is there anything you notice that you, you, you attribute to that? And did you see anything, you know, coming back from Rutgers that shows that these guys are, you know, really ready to get back out there and wash the taste of the Yeah, I would say um, practice today showed me a lot. I thought we had a, a terrific practice. Uh, our leadership was great. Our volume was great. I always say when you you know you're you know they're dialed in when you can hear them. Now I was a little loud today too, but in, in, in both ways, positive and negative, or positive in teaching. I'll say positive in teaching. But I, I think that's when you know they're engaged and ready to respond to some adversity and challenge. Look, you got to take care of your home games in the Big Ten. The the road is so brutal. I mean, the rock was great the other night. It, we, I know our fans are going to come out. They came out at the Plester. They came out at the games, uh, at the Cornell game after, between, you know, between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, you know, if they come out and we have that home court advantage, it's really going to help us. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.